That day, that Sunday after they buried him, some of the women went to the tomb to anoint his body. When they got there, <laughs> when they got there, the, the tomb was empty. The stone, the, the huge stone was rolled away and the grave was empty. Mary Magdalene was so wrapped up in her grief over the death of Jesus that she could only think that someone had stolen his body. Not only had they robbed her of the life of this man, now they'd even robbed the grave. Tears flooded her eyes. She stumbled into the garden, sobbing. Suddenly she saw someone. Mary, he said. She thought it must be the gardener. Please, please, if you know where they've taken his body, won't you tell me? Mary, he said like he used to. Then she recognized him. Go tell them that I'm alive. He's alive. He is 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 alive and he showed me the way. He gives me joy to be in every day. He is alive and he's opened the door. Oh! 
worship this morning. Stand and lift your hands. We need your hands. We need them clapping. We need them singing. Let's celebrate. Here in your love 
And there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid. ever been able to. Amen? Amen. 
and forever, forever, he will reign, and forever he will be in our heart. Amen. Hallelujah! We sing Hallelujah! We sing Hallelujah! 
You may be seated if you like this morning. Forever. That's a mighty long time. There's a song that says that. Oh yeah, we just sang it. Forever and ever and ever. He will be glorified. Amen. Hey, if you are a child this morning and you would love to go to Sunday school, they are waiting for you at the back door and they'll take you to Sunday school. Thank you, gentlemen. So make your way to the back doors. If you are not a child this morning, stay seated. We're going to take a moment this morning to take communion. And if you would like to partake in communion this morning and did not get your elements on your way in, uh, please raise your hand up and those will be brought down to you. We have a couple down here in the front. So if you want to bring those down, those will be brought to you this morning. It's always a special time. I think communion is always a special time. We got one over here to the, your right as well, Curtis. Communion is always a special time, but especially, especially on Easter morning. On Easter morning, because do you realize that just four days ago, on Thursday, Jesus was sitting in the upper room, having a great time of fellowship and food with 12 of his best friends. And they were laughing having a great time. Jesus was washing their feet. And then Jesus broke the mood and said, uh, hey, you see this bread right here? This bread is my body. This bread will be broken for you. And they're like, what? Well, you're right here. What are you talking about? And he said, here. And he passed around the glass of wine. And he said, this wine is the New Testament, my blood. With this blood, your sins will be forgiven. With this blood, you will be made whole. Isaiah said that though our sins be like scarlet, they will be washed as white as snow because of the blood of Jesus. So this morning on Easter morning as we've already excitedly proclaimed this morning at our 6.30 service that He is alive. No one could have known on that Thursday night what was going to happen that weekend. But boy, what a weekend it was because He is alive. So as we partake this morning, as you partake of the bread that represents his body and the juice that represents his blood, I'm going to pray and then invite you to partake at your own time. Lord, we thank you this morning for your body that was broken for us, for your body that suffered stripes on its back piercing of the nails on the cross the crown of thorns on your head you, you did that for me and for that I am thankful and your blood shed as you walked up that hill carrying your cross so much blood loss that you fell to your knees and a man had to come and help you carry your cross the rest of the way but in that moment you looked ahead in time and you looked me in the face and you said my son this blood is for you and for that I am truly thankful I love you Jesus thank you for loving me you may partake this morning
Thank you. Hey, I just have a few announcements for you this morning before Pastor comes and delivers the word to us this morning. Uh, the, the biggest announcement I want to make is if you don't know what's going on at the church, or maybe you're new here, um, you can. we have a, a church app that you can download. There's signs all over the lobby, and if you make it way into the restroom, there's signs in there. Um, so download the app, and you can follow and see what's going on at the church. And so we welcome you to do that. But a couple things that are going on this week that we wanted you to know about. On Wednesday at 12 o'clock is our senior luncheon. It's right down the, the walkway, the last door on the left. And that's at 12 o'clock, and you are invited to join. You can sign up on the app, or you can sign up in the lobby on the sign-up sheets at the Welcome Center. And also, um, if this is your first time here, we say welcome this morning, and we want to invite you uh, after service to visit the Welcome Center, and we have a gift for you this morning, so please make your way back there to, to see someone, and we just say welcome to you this morning. And then, uh, secondly, we have our men's breakfast on Saturday at 8 a.m. That's also in the social hall. It's also on the app, so if you want to sign up and if you want to suggest that there's more bacon or whatever, you can do that as well. But we always have tons of bacon, and it's a great time of fellowship with the guys. That's 8 o'clock this Saturday morning in the fellowship hall. And last but not least, uh, two weeks from now will be Baptism Sunday. So if you've ever thought, oh, I need to get baptized, please make sure you see uh, myself, Pastor, or Gary. Let us know, and we will get you set up for that. That is April 14th. Um, on Baptism Sunday, so we want to make sure that you are ready to do that. Amen? Amen? So we are so blessed to have you this morning, and we're blessed to have this man of God come and give us the word this morning. So, uh, oh, 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 you go ahead and clap for him. No, I no, forgot th- one th- th- don't, 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 don't. Go ahead and tell them about that. <laughs> Stop. Shh, 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 shh. I, I did forget one thing. I saw many of you staring at these little Jesuses all around the church, and you'll see them in front of you, on your chairs, on your pew. There's some, well, I don't want to give it away, but there's some on the walls. There's some, they're all over. There's like, what, 250 250 of these around the church. And these are our, this is our uh, hunt for the young, for the the junior high and high school kids today. They're going to find Jesus. That's our hope today, but by the end of the service, <laughs> that they no. will find Jesus. One so, way or the other. One way or the other, they're going to find Jesus. So, um, so please don't take, don't touch him. Don't touch Jesus. Don't move him. That's where he needs to be. Um, if you want to put him in your pocket so he's close to your heart, that's okay. But uh, that's what those were there for if you were wondering. So. Yeah, so if you, know. if you find Jesus on the floor, he's not supposed to be on the floor, okay? So um, if you find a Jesus on the floor, hide him. So it's like Easter eggs for our junior high and high schoolers because they, we can't do the, the hunt outside, so that's kind of what we're going to do with our, our young people. So help us with that, okay? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Beautiful. That's a phrase that comes straight from a biblical text in Matthew 28. We're going to get there in a few minutes. I need you to have your Bible open and ready. We're going to be um, shooting through some different po- uh, portions of Scripture throughout the, the morning this morning. And, and because this morning we already sang, He is alive. Can you say that? He is alive. Yes. If you haven't told somebody that this morning, I encourage you when you leave here, tell somebody He is alive. Okay, if you're going to get some ham, some fixins at the grocery store afterwards today and you're standing in line, just turn to some random person and say, he is alive. And if they look at you like you're crazy, just explain things to them. Let them know what that means. He is alive. Say it. He is alive. And when he is risen, indeed, that portion right out of Luke comes to life for, for us. There's a passage that, that, that Simon says, indeed, the Lord is risen. So it comes straight out of the Bible. We're going to talk a little bit about that later, later on. But I want to say, happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. What an amazing time to celebrate together the beauty of an empty tomb. Never, never has an empty spot been more celebrated than on a day like this. But today we're going to ask you the question, who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? And yes, the right answer usually in church is Jesus. Absolutely. I guess about 11 or 12 years ago, um, I was working at um, the church I was a part of at, at that point. 
and it's, it's kind of a larger building, and I run all over campus all day long. Do it here, I did it there. And uh, about this time, uh, I'd probably dropped about 30 pounds. I'd been trying to lose some weight. I got kind of chunky. I didn't like that. And so I started to, to lose that weight. But one of the side effects to that is anytime I would wave my arms, my, well, apparently I've gained some of the weight back. Yikes. <laughs> doesn't go any. When I would, I would go like this or play the piano or do something crazy, my ring would fly off my finger. And it's, it's a problem. How many of you have ever lost your wedding ring for any moment in time? Okay, it's a scary thing. Some panic can set in. And it has happened a couple of times over the years. And this particular time, um, it, it had flown off somewhere on campus. And I was really frustrated and angry and concerned and scared. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And, and I, called, I called my wife frantic. And she said, don't worry, you're still married. <laughs> it's okay. We can replace the ring. You're still married. It doesn't change anything. But throughout the day as I was looking for it, I became more concerned. Am I going to have to replace it? It's irreplaceable. It's, it's, it's priceless. Retracing my steps all that day, all the places that I had been, what am I going to do? And then at one point during the day, I went back into the, the back of the, the stage, and there's an area where um, we did the baptistry laundry. And I pulled one of the, the loads out and put it out, got it out of the dryer and put it aside, and I got the other load out of the washer, and this sound happened. And in that moment, if you have ever lost anything and then you found it, do you know that feeling? Do you know that feeling of finding something that was lost? That's what I felt in that moment. And I put it on and, and I said, I'm never, I am never going to lose this thing again. I rigged like a, a, a rubber band to my wrist so it wouldn't go anywhere. And just really desperate not to lose things. And we hate to lose things. But this morning, this morning we gather to celebrate the greatest find in the history of the world. You know what the greatest find in the history of the world is? An empty tomb. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to have some work to do, obviously. An empty tomb! Yeah. All right, you're going to have to be there with me because we're celebrating. We're celebrating. Some of you haven't been in this room in a year. And we want you to celebrate with us. Some of you haven't been in this room in a long time. We want you to celebrate with us. Celebrate what God is doing. Celebrate what he did on this day 2,000 years ago. The tomb is empty. He is risen. And don't worry, I'm not just trying to get you to yell out things, okay? But that, that is a beautiful thing that we do in this place today. We're, we're celebrating an empty tomb. And the title of the message today is, Who Are You Looking For? Who are you looking for today? And, and to give us a little background, um, we need to go back in time a little bit. Um, some of you were in this room on Good Friday when we celebrated um, what was happening on that day. We're going to tell a little bit of that story, but we're going to back up even, even further. Get your Bible out and turn to Luke chapter 7. And the first question that we're going to ask is, what are you looking for, John? Who are you looking for, John? Luke chapter 7. Verse 20, just, just that verse alone, 720. And this, is, this one's in the NIV, but we're going to skip back into a couple of translations as we go through this morning. 7, 720 says this, top of the next page. When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you and asked, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? If you're new to the biblical story, if you're new to the person of Jesus, Jesus was doing crazy things all over, all over the place where, where he was. He was healing people. He was giving sight to blind people. He was curing people with leprosy. Beautiful things were happening. He had raised a person from the dead. This, this man, Jesus, is the most powerful man in all of history. From the beginning of time, there's no one more powerful than, than he. And how do we know this? We look at, 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 at the next portion. 
um, beginning in 21, we're just going to read down to 23. At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, hey, go back and report to John what you've seen and heard. Hey, the blind receive sight. This is Jesus' words. The, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Who were they looking for? They were looking for a savior. They were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the one who was going to deliver them. And in Jesus, they had found that and so much more. They had found a healer. They had found a teacher. They had found, they had found a friend. And that's, that's a question for us this morning. What, what is it that you are looking for? Some, some of you may just need a friend. You know, in, in the culture that we live in, you can have a thousand friends on Facebook and have no friends in real life. Do you understand that? We have so many friends online and no one to share life with us sometimes. So sometimes you may just need a friend. You may be this morning here and you need a healer. Like you need a touch. Like you have pain. And at the end of the service, there's going to be some folks down here and you can come and pray. And, and, and maybe if it's in God's will, he'll heal you. That's available to you. Some of you need a healer. Some of you need a savior. Some of you need to, to have someone come into your life and take you where you are to where he wants you to be. You may need a savior this morning. I want you to look at another time that this, this important question is asked. I want you to turn to John chapter 18. I'm going to have it in the New Living Translation on the screen, so it's not going to match exactly what you see in your Bible probably, but it'll be up there and you can follow along the best you can in, in your translation. Here, here's the thing. On the night before Jesus gave his life, okay, the night before, Judas was on a mission to betray Jesus. Judas is one of the twelve, okay, he's one of the disciples, one of the main guys that were following Jesus. And on this night, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and here's what, in, what, what unfolded. Again, this is from the New Living Translation. It'll be on the screen. And the question I have for you is, what are you looking for, soldiers? What are you looking for? John 18, verse 3 to 9. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a, a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons, they, they arrived at the olive grove. Jesus fully realized all that was going to happen to him. So he stepped forward to meet them. Here's the question. Who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And here's Judas who had betrayed him. Judas was standing with them. Pick it up in verse 6. As, as Jesus said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Okay? You want to talk about the power of Jesus. That's what, that's what we're here to celebrate this morning. When this moment happens, all these guys just fall back on the ground. Like bowling pins. Uh, imagine that. Who are you looking for? Once more he asked them. And again they replied, Jesus the Nazarene. I told you I am he, Jesus said. And since I'm the one you want, let these others go. And he did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of those you have given me. What were they looking for? See, Judas was on a mission. And the word says that the devil had entered him. Literally, the devil had, had, had filled the God-shaped hole in his heart. 
And so now the Pharisees had been presented with the opportunity that they were looking for. The soldiers, guards had their mission. They were all there to do something. And Jesus said, who are you looking for? And, and the answer for the Pharisees was, was this guy that, that kept claiming he was the Messiah. We got to take this guy out. They were looking for him so that they could do away with him. They'd already tried to kill him and they failed. They tried to get rid of him and they couldn't. But, but now, now Jesus says, I've been here all along. So he looks at Judas and says, do what you came to do. He says to the Pharisees, I've been right here. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Now was the time. Now was the time. It was time for Jesus to do what he came to do. So who are you looking for? Who is it that you're looking for? Maybe, maybe you're like one of the Pharisees this morning. And, and Jesus is just a guy who claimed to be the son of God. But perhaps, perhaps you're still looking for your personal savior. Maybe, maybe you haven't said yes to Jesus yet. And then there are folks like Judas, and, and they, get, they get really close to, to Jesus only to betray him. And, and, and I don't think that's any, any one of us here. But, but, but maybe we betray Jesus in subtle ways. Maybe not even on purpose. Maybe it's just something that happens. Because here's the thing. We are all looking for something. But on a day like this, on a day like this, on Easter Sunday, this is what I want you to see. And, and again, we talk a lot uh, around here about the God-shaped hole that lives in each one of our hearts. It's a God-shaped hole. And this hole is placed there by God, and it can only truly be filled by God himself. By having Jesus in that place, by being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's that idea of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the only thing but, that belongs in that hole. So then for us, the question is, are you looking for fulfillment? Perhaps you're looking for, I, I do. I look for fulfillment all the time. And it's not always found here. Shame on me. It's not always found in the things of God. And sometimes we can call it the, the search for enlightenment. I mean, we all want to be enlightened, right? Culture wants to be enlightened. Other people are just looking for fulfillment. Just fill me. I need to be filled. I'm tired of feeling like I have an empty cup all of the time. I want to be fulfilled. I want to be filled. But here's the problem. Some people use their career to fill the God-shaped hole. And sometimes we, we try to use relationships to fill that God-shaped hole. Put, we put our spouse in there and try to make them live up to what only God can live up to. And it never goes well. Sometimes we'll put a friend or, or another acquaintance in there and ask them to live up to the God-shaped hole in our lives. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It never goes well because nothing else, no one else is Jesus. No one else is Jesus. Nothing else is Jesus. And here's the thing. Your spouse is going to fail you. I can't tell you how many times I failed my spouse this week. I can't count it on two hands. It's a lot. And, and your friends are going to fail you. You are going to fail you. And when you try to put yourself in the God-shaped hole, bad things can happen. When Jesus asked that question, who are you looking for? Some in the garden that, di that night didn't even understand why they were there. They didn't even really know why they were there. 
And for Judas, the, the devil was in that God-shaped hole. And the Pharisees, they looked for fulfillment um, by the elimination of a rival. Jesus was a threat to their rule and to their reign. And in some cases, their very livelihood. They had put success and influence in their God-shaped hole. They came to this place looking for something, but they didn't know they didn't know what they truly needed was standing right in front of them. He was standing right there. And how many times, how many times do we live our, our lives not even acknowledging that he's there? Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the cares of the world, so many of the tasks that we have to perform, so many of the things that we have to do that we don't recognize that Jesus is right there with us. That's us sometimes. There's one more story that I want you to see this morning. One more question asked. Can you flip over to Matthew 28 for me? Matthew 28. One of, one of my jobs here, in case you're new, is to get you to love your Bible. I want you to love your Bible. I want you to love reading it. I want, you to, I want you to look forward to diving into it and seeing what it has to say to you. So one more thing I want to show you today. Who are you looking for, Mary? Who are you looking for? And this is one of the greatest stories ever. It's, it's the story of Resurrection Day. Mary and a gal named Mary Magdalene had already come out of the tomb and they found, they found, check this out, it was empty. If you, did, if, if you just got dragged to church this morning, you have no idea what the story is. That's the, that's the takeaway. The, the tomb, the, the, the grave, it's empty. It's empty. We don't have to live like it's full anymore. We get to live like the tomb is empty. Here's the story, Matthew 28, verses 1 to 7. This will be in the NIV and it'll be on the screen. You can probably follow a little closer in, in your Bible. Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, that's today, that's this moment, that's right now, maybe three, four hours ago, okay? And there was a violent earthquake. A violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Just chilling. Just hanging out. All, all the work had already been done. They just get to sit and enjoy it and wait for people to come by and say, hey, he's risen. I'd like that job, wouldn't you? I like that job. His appearance, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Go inside. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you, he is risen. He is risen Thank you. He's there. He's gone. He's gone. Where's he go? The angel the angel didn't even have to ask the question. The angel didn't even have to say, who are you looking for? Didn't even have to say it. Because they knew that the Marys had come to see. And before the girls even had a chance to say anything, the angels did. They said what angels say. You remember what angels say, right? What do they say? Do not be afraid. Whether it's Christmas Eve, shouting it out in the fields and terrifying all the shepherds below. Or Easter morning, the story is the same. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. I got this. Because it was an angel of the Lord. And when the angel of the Lord shows up, you better pay attention. Because he's got a message for you. He said, don't worry. It's going to be okay. It had already been a crazy morning. I mean, it had been an insane morning. A, 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 a huge earthquake. Open tombs. Crazy stuff. I, 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 
there were like, was it zombies? Yeah. If we're going deep, there was crazy stuff happening. Check out your Bible. There's some amazing stories in there of dead people walking around. Okay. It's not what we're here to talk about, but I'm just saying there was crazy stuff happening. It was all because of Jesus. All because of the son of the living God. And now angels deliver the greatest news that could ever been heard. And, and the Marys must have been ecstatic about what was happening. Jesus was alive. He was risen. Just as the angel said. But where'd he go? Where, where'd he go? Where is he? Turn over to John's account. Just to the right. John 20. And I am going to put this up in the NLT because um, the whole theme exists in the, the, the New Living Translation. It says this, she, Mary Magdalene, turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I will go get him. Mary! I don't know how he said it. That sounded more like George than any... <laughs> Mary. How do you say Mary? Mary! It doesn't, it doesn't matter how he said it. There's an exclamation point that, that means he got her attention. It was a moment where, where he grabbed her by the very heart and said, Mary. She turned him and cried out, Rabbanai, which is Hebrew for teacher. That question, that question, who are you looking for, had been answered. It had been answered for Mary that day in that moment. And the reality had been answered for her many times before. She'd already been looking at Jesus. She got to see him. She got to stand in front of him. He got to, she got to enjoy his embrace. She'd followed him. Roy, Roy called him an apostle of apostles. That's how important Mary Magdalene's story is. As her, teach, as her teacher, she's, she'd always supported him in his ministry. And, and, and he had cast seven demons out of her. So, so he wasn't just a friend. He was a deliverer. And more than most, she got to observe Jesus and how he ministered to people and how he loved people. And she had a front row seat the entire time. And in this moment, she must have mistaken. No, she mistook him. Okay, the story, the story goes, it, it says that she had to turn, which means she wasn't facing him at, the, at that moment. She was kind of turned away from him when he called her name. And when he did, she must have turned. She must have wanted to jump right into his arms. And he said, oh, no, 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 not right now. Okay, so Jesus is here. He's about an inch tall. So I'm going to drive the point home. Um, it's a it's a Easter egg Jesus Jesus it's a Jesus hunt afterwards but Jesus in that moment says no don't touch me don't touch me yet I haven't ascended to the father in, in one of the translations he says I I have not been given my glorified body I gotta go so when you see Jesus on the floor make sure and pick him up where he belongs okay Put him in his rightful place. But here's the thing this morning for us. He is in the best place, the best place that he can be in this moment. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's seated right there. Everything's cool. Just like the angel said, all is well. Don't worry. I got this. That's beautiful. And the angel says, don't worry. And then Jesus says, don't worry. And he says her name. Maybe, maybe you need to have Jesus say your name this morning. Because you're looking for something. How do I know? Because we're all looking for something. It was still dark. 
and now she had seen the light. Last week, we heard Mary Magdalene's testimony distilled down to a very short phrase. Mary Magdalene said, I was one way, and now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. Now she had been the first to see him, among the first to see him, among the first to hear his voice, and she did what I think that we would do. See, the terrible feeling of the God-shaped hole in her life, being empty, that, that, that Friday afternoon feeling, they'd taken my God from me. We said that at the beginning of the service. It felt like he had been snatched away. And that empty Saturday afternoon feeling. Sometimes we live in that Saturday afternoon feeling like Jesus isn't alive. But on Sunday morning, she realized, she realized what goes in that God-shaped hole. Now her, her God-shaped hole was bursting with life as Jesus stood before her. And her, who are you looking for, was changed to, I have seen the Lord. That's what she got to proclaim. I have seen the Lord. And she must have like bounced like she was on the moon. Okay? No gravity for Mary Magdalene that day. She bounced from place to place saying, I have seen the Lord. He is alive. I have seen him. He is alive. He is risen. I needed your help with that. That's good. There's a song by the, the old rock and roll group, U2. Anybody heard of U2? They have this song, one of my favorite um, secular songs of all time. Still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> here, here are the lyrics. I, this, okay, so Bono penned this, and these are the words that they sing. I believe in the kingdom come. Then all the, the colors, they'll bleed into one. Yeah, they'll bleed into one, but yes, I'm still running. Yeah, you broke the bonds, you loosed the chains, you carried the cross of my, my shame. You know, you know I believe it. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. How sad that some of us, that's the way that we live our lives. We know the power of God. We know the power that Jesus had we know the power that the Spirit has in our lives every day. And sometimes we go, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Are you kidding me? Today is the reminder. This is the reminder. That we know the one who took all of our shame and had himself nailed to the cross. Because here's the beauty. Here's the beauty of the empty grave. It reminds us of the person who came out of it. And when we look at what Jesus can do in our lives, what he can bring us out of, what he can deliver us from, what he can take us to, what we can become in him that's when we realize true fulfillment and true purpose. And we know that he is the only person who can offer us forgiveness and eternal life. And there are going to be a lot of people that, that come out this year. I'm, I'm warning you. In the next couple of months, there are, going to people, there are going to be people who come out of the woodwork and say, I know what you need. It's this guy. Or it's this guy. It's neither one of those guys. Okay? Politicians can't save you. Only Jesus can. Okay? If you're looking for a president to lead you in the way everlasting, you will soon find that they cannot do that. If you're looking for an accountant to save you, look, the stuff of the world won't do it. You can have nothing in your bank account and you can worry all the time, or you can have the fattest bank account and still worry all of the time. And you'll still have a God shaped hole. When you try to fill it with the wrong things. You can have all you ever need in this world and still have a God-shaped hole in your heart. Empty. 
Because if you put politics and ideologies in there, you'll never find peace and you ain't ever going to find joy. And if you own a TV, if you own a TV, um, you know there's a guy that used to say, I'll fight for you. Well, guess what? His voice has been silenced. Passed away a couple weeks ago. I guess there's no one left to fight for us now. But there's six or seven guys on your TV who say they can do it better than he can. And if you're looking for one of those guys to save you, they might be great in the courtroom, but they're never going to bring you to heaven. They're never going to wash your sins away. They're never going to give you eternal life like Jesus can. And some people put their faith in celebrities and influencers. And people put out a video and suddenly people will buy whatever they're selling. They'll wear whatever they're wearing. They'll say whatever they are saying. But they will never call your name. Only Jesus is going to do that. Amen. Only Jesus will call your name. <laughs> nobody, nobody will fight for you the way that Jesus fights for you. And no one will love you the way that Jesus loves you. And when Jesus calls your name, everything changes. Everything changes. So today, today you might be a person who, who says, I, I, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I want to suggest to you that, yes, the answer is Jesus. Jesus is the one that you are looking for. Just John 10.10. 10, the the, there's a thief out there that comes only to kill and destroy and steal. And Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the what? To the full. No one else can say that. No one else says that. And there's no one else who can fill the God-shaped hole in your life. And here's the gospel. This is the good news. 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Praise be. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. So this morning as we get ready to close, I, I want to say to you, don't get caught in the trap of looking in the wrong place or looking to the wrong people to find the truth of Easter because Jesus is the only one who can deliver you. This is the story of Jesus. This is from the message. He was looked down on and passed over. A man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum. But the fact is, it was our pains he carried. Our disfigurements. All of the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself. That God was punishing him for his own failures, but it was our sin that did that to him. That ripped and tore and crushed him. Our sins. He took the punishment and that made us whole. Through his bruises we get healed. That was a story of Jesus that was written by some guy named Isaiah way before Jesus came and told us what to be looking for. But the good news is, the best news is that the story didn't end on the cross. It began at the empty tomb. Because the fact is that he is alive. And that doesn't just give us hope. It gives us a promise. A promise of eternal life. And we get to, we get to know, <laughs> man, we get to know that we can face every day because he's alive. Amen? Here's what I want to do this morning. I'd just like you to close your eyes. And I'm going to tell you a couple things. And then I'm going to pray over you and we're going to sing. And we're going to, we're going to remember that, that Jesus is alive. And we're we'll celebrate him one more time. But here's what I want to do. Um, there are some folks who are going to be down front here. And they're, they're, they're just waiting to pray for you. 
They want to pray for you. Like we said earlier, if you just need a friend, these people are here to pray with you. Maybe, maybe you need healing today. Maybe it's healing that you need. Um, these, these people would love to pray for you, for healing for you this day. And if it, if it would be God's will to heal, that would be an amazing, amazing Easter gift. But maybe you're here this morning and you've never said yes to Jesus. You've never said yes to the person of Jesus being the Lord and Savior of your life. We want to give you an opportunity to do just that. And I'm going to do something that we don't often do. I'm just going to give you a minute. I just want to give you a minute. And in, in this moment, I, I just want to invite you to, to begin to come now. Now, the, the thing is, we normally say, hey, come during the song, and you can come afterwards and pray. But if this is your moment where you need to come and have some prayer, I want to invite you to come in this moment. Just stand up from wherever you are and come up. The people are here. And they'll, they'll be with you and, and, and pray with you and, 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 and do what it is, the business that, that Jesus needs to do with your heart this morning, whatever that looks like. So the invitation is to come. And receive prayer. Maybe receive Jesus. Maybe pray for healing. They are here. So God, the truth of this moment is that we cannot live without you. But because you live, we can face tomorrow. And God, we understand that, that you did for us what no one else could do because you loved us. And we're so grateful and thankful. So God, in this moment, thank you for salvation. Thank you for an empty tomb. Thank you for an empty grave that tells us that we can live because you live. And now be with us, God, as we lift our voices to you, as we sing praise to you, as we give our all to you in this moment. And we do pray it in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Folks are here. You can pray at any time. Come down. Don't be afraid. They're here. We're all for you. But let's sing together. Would you stand to your feet? Let's sing together. Because he lives. They called him Jesus, he came to the Yeah.
Thank you for being here this morning. Now, if you want to stick around, we don't have donuts this morning. We've got something better. If you want to make your way down the, the hall to the social hall, they prepared some great food for you this morning. If you want to stick around and just have some fellowship, that would be great. I know there's more. We got to get out. You got to get out of here because we got <laughs> Easter eggs we got to hide. So, fellowship over there. So, let me pray and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are risen indeed. And thank you that we could come together and worship and praise you. And we bless this day in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And if you are